Does the GT1030 still hold up in 2023? Hello guys, this is Ray's Gaming and Tech Productions and today I will be going over whether or not the Nvidia GT1030 is still worth it today. Today, today. The NVIDIA GT1030 is considered by some people a pretty bad card and by others a really good budget card. A lot of people have reasons for their opinions though which can include things like performance, cost and more. Lots of people who have a decent opinion on the card tend to enjoy the surprisingly low cost depending on where you look and the decent performance that this card outputs. Then you have people who have bad opinions on the card like the ongoing inability to play newer titles that come out every day and feel that they are better off getting a slightly better card like the GTX 660 or better. But if you don't care much about playing upcoming games in the next 5 years then the GT1030 is the way to go. The GT1030 was announced on March 17th of 2017 at a launch price of a surprising $75 with a decent 2GB of VRAM, a base clock rate of 1228 MHz, and a max clock rate of 1468 MHz. Now this card is part of the GeForce 10 series which includes cards like the GTX 1050, 1060, 1070, and 1080 with the GTX 1080 being the best card in the GeForce 10 series and the GT1030 barely making it into the entry level rank. Now one good thing about the GT1030 is that it takes a very low 30 watts from your power supply well at least low compared to the amount of watts a RTX 4090 takes which is 450 watts just from the graphics card itself. That's basically like placing a car engine into your PC and testing it out to see what happens. Now enough of the backstory of this card, let's get into the important specs of this beautiful card. Some of the main specs of the GT1030 includes two categories being the GDDR5 version of the card and the DDR4 version of the card having a big performance difference overall. Now starting off both versions have the same 384 CUDA cores that for what I know of is used to make precise calculations almost like CPU cores. Then you have the first difference being the memory speeds. The GDDR5 has 3000 MHz while the DDR4 version only consists of 1050 MHz which might explain why the GDDR5 version is better. Next you have simple features like Nvidia Ansel, G-Sync and GameStream which neither card support and then you have VR Ready which I can personally disagree with because I at least have experience with the GDDR5 version of the card in various VR games like Trover Saves the Universe, Emily Wants to Play, Phasmophobia and plenty more. But I wouldn't suggest that you try this on the DDR4 version. Now next we have DirectX, Vulkan and OpenGL which this card supports all three. Then last but not least we have multi monitor support which is supported and allows you to use multiple monitors to navigate your system but be aware that although it supports multiple monitors the resolution of your chosen monitors can have a drastic performance decrease. Next I will show you a few of my past benchmarks of various games showing CPU usage, GPU usage, FPS and the settings of each game. Enjoy.
Now as you guys can see from the benchmarks, the FPS was definitely fluctuating, but that's mostly from the FPS not being locked and probably because of my CPU. So if you want to play one of those games I just played, I would suggest that you try it for yourself and lock the FPS which will give you guys a very smooth gameplay. Now that was it for the benchmark, but the final question is, is it still worth it in 2023? Now I'm going to give a very opinionated response to that question and you guys can give your own opinion on it in the comments. I feel like although new games are constantly coming out like Dead Space and Forspoken which are games that are asking for your PC to literally be as powerful as a NASA spaceship, it still gives a lot of the budget cards like low end AMD cards and the GTX 660s and similar a run for their money. Depending on what games you are targeting and how much developers are focusing on optimizing their games, I would personally say that it's still worth it if you have a low budget and you're looking for gaming and only gaming. This card plays some of the most famous games till this day like Fortnite and Minecraft at a steady FPS that's actually playable. Now some people could say that it can't play a lot of games which is true, but it all depends on your taste in games and how you look for games.